going on everybody welcome back to TMT today we are going to be replacing this blower motor inside of this day and night package heat pump I don't think I've done a video probably um, I don't think ever or at least it's been a long time on how to change out a blower motor but there's really nothing to it it's a uh, you know most elect electrical components in an HVAC system are much easier to replace than to replace anything even minor in the refrigeration cycle so I consider this to be a very easy repair now I don't recommend that if you're not an HVAC technician you do it but this is just for educational purpose purposes as always so pretty much um, the way I diagnose them this is the, the commonly known as x13 motor you can see it here right the power is off but I diagnosed it with the power on and it's very simple it's got the bottom harness is the high voltage and the top harness is the low voltage so uh, you pretty much just check that you have I just checked I had 240 from my black and my yellow uh, well first of all I confirmed that the uh, thermostat was sending cooling uh, was sending the cooling signal, which it was. The compressor was running, outdoor fan motor was running, but the blower was not. So then I went to this and I checked, okay, you know, do I have 240 here? Yes, I do, between yellow and black, and I did. Then I went from my top, which is my low voltage, from, I tried each from the speed that it was on, uh, which I think it was on the high speed, and I put my lead in here and my other lead on the brown down here, which is just a common, and I had 24 volts. So if you have 24 volts on the top and the brown, and you have 240 between yellow and black, you pretty much um, are receiving good signals. The but the motor's not running, so your motor's just bad. But that's pretty much it. Okay, very simple. So let's go ahead and change it out. There's nothing to these things. And there's a screw in here that just kind of holds this in the rail right there right so I'm gonna undo that screw real quick It'll be a little bit tough because I don't have my go GoPro it's okay Let's try to do it with one hand if not I may just have to pause the video got that screw out and then this thing pretty much just slide it out a little bit and then here is where you're gonna undo these harnesses Right, just kind of unplug them just straight out. Nothing to them. Right? Very, very simple. And then you're going to put this, pull this whole thing out. I'll try to do it with one hand. See if I can. Okay, so I pulled out the whole shell. You know, or the whole, it's called, we call this a squirrel cage. Some people call it wheel housing. This is the blower wheel. This is the housing. We just call it the squirrel cage. And uh, so pretty much we put it on a surface where you can work on it. There's the big place where it used to be. And uh, the next step is fairly simple. We're going to first uh, loosen up this set screw, which tightens up on the shaft. And after we do that, we're probably going to have to sand this thing down real well looks looks like it's gonna be a pain if um, because it's rusted it's gonna be a pain to slide off but then we undo these bolts right here and pull this whole assembly out all right so let's go ahead and do that okay so there you can see I sanded down the shaft pretty well with just some basic essentially some basic sand cloth and with my small wrench to loosen up that set screw and now sliding back and forth so that's all that's how you want it to be before you get to the next step which is loosening up these bolts let's go ahead and uh, do that and I have a little kit for that let me see hopefully it's the right size dang it 
Looks like I need the slightly bigger one. I think I have it. Let me see. Come on. Oh, never mind. I gotta go get it in the truck. But I mean, honestly, you don't have to have the drill attachment. You could do it the old school way with just the basic wrench, right? It's gonna take a little bit longer, but not a big deal. So you do that. Okay, so here we got the bolts off. It literally took, I don't know, a minute to get them off. So not a big deal if you don't have a, you know, the, the, the impact attachment to do that it's okay so this part is where you're going to either take a picture uh, is what I would recommend or just have very good uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, memory when you take this off because when you take it off you want to make sure that the new motor has you know the 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 plugs in a very similar location to the old one okay or else because if you have if you put it on later on if you don't remember how it went you are going to work harder okay because the, if you put this on the back side or this side then the wires do not reach so it's very important to just keep that in mind also about kind of the depth of the motor uh, on, on this bracket it's about three inches a little bit under three inches two and three quarter that's just kind of a measurement that I take just as a precaution but yeah just just take a few pictures take a quick video so that you can put it back and it'll be a lot easier so now we slide this sucker out put these bolts aside kind of go, kind of go back and forth and then yeah it should just slide out there it is okay and then you can put this one, I like to put it upside down. And now we are going to uh, essentially get the new motor on and put this bracket on the new motor. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so here is the new motor. As you can see, I went ahead, I went ahead and ordered a OEM motor. Because for one, this unit's like eight years old and it was under warranty. But even if it was out of warranty and the owners wanted uh, to replace the motor and not upgrade the AC, I would tell them, let's get the OEM motor because it's going to run, you know, exactly how the manufacturer intended it to run. And yes, you can put some retrofit motors, aftermarket motors, even you can even put a PSC motor if you wanted to. But I do not recommend that and I don't like to do that. So OEM for me. So again this is the part where you take a few pictures you still have a chance to do it um, you measure from here to here so that the new bracket or the old bracket can fit very very close to where uh, on the new motor to where the old motor was and trust me you will not struggle this route okay so let's do it pretty much all you really need to do I won't be able to get it on video because I need two hands you need to hold one side of this uh, bolt right here and loosen this nut and then this bracket will open up enough for you to slide it up and then set it on the new one so actually let me see i could try with one hand let me see sorry i don't bring my go gopro enough nope it's not i'm gonna need two hands but anyways yeah hold this one undo this one enough to slide this whole thing out put it back on this one and then literally tighten it up right fairly simple okay so there it is i got the bracket nice and snug it's got to be really nice and tight these legs should not be easily movable okay it's nice and tight and again in a very similar location to where the old one was so now we're really really just going to do reverse engineering you know and um, this is really all this is this is so let's go ahead and put it um, back here again uh, feed it through that uh, feed the shaft through that uh, blower wheel and uh, tighten up the top and then we'll tighten the set screw in the back so let me see if we can do this with one hand if I could do this with one hand you may be able to do it all on your own with two hands right yeah. okay dokie let's see Uh, 
All right, not bad. Okay, so now feed these little rubber uh, grommets through through the holes here, through the screw holes. Feed them through, and once you have them through, I'm gonna need to do it with two hands probably. Then you're gonna put on your bolts. Okay, so let me do that. And you know what? Honestly, I ended up finding it much easier to just pull the rubber a little grommets off of there and uh, just feeding them through here and then just sending it on top of there so you may need to do that okay just just a kind of a tip so now that we got those you know we guided it in put the shaft in through the blower wheel put these bolts on nice and snug now again we just flip it over and ugh, this part is pretty important because if you don't do it right it's gonna sound like two cats are killing each other and when this thing turns on and it may even you know damage something so what I'm talking about is the uh, first of all the set screw has to be on the flat portion of the shaft I don't know if you can see that but the blower wheel cannot be grinding on either side so you got to make sure that before you tighten it that it can spin freely okay it can't be too far either way imagine that right imagine that noise um, when it starts up just multiply times like a hundred so yeah you don't want to do that so just make sure it, it you know spins freely either way both ways and then you tighten it tighten the set screw okay on the flat portion of the shaft all right so let's do that Okay, so now that we got that set screw really nice and tight and it's not grinding anywhere, let's go ahead and slide it back into place. And that is fairly simple. I just wish I had brought my GoPro. But let's see if I can do it with one. Uh, I don't think I can do it with one hand. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. You do need two hands, you know. You don't have to be a super strong person to do this, but you need you do need to have, you know, two hands. So let me see if I can do it this way. Let me see if I can set this thing somewhere. <clears throat> Come on. Maybe not. Alright, maybe not, y'all. Either way, you know, the blower's got to be facing, or the motor's got to be facing up so you can plug it in. So, and, uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so now that, you know, I got this bad boy right here on this rail here, in between, in kind of this rail, you put the motor in. And this kind of supports the weight on the front end, or the back end. And then you've got to put this screw back on that we took off earlier. We need to make sure that that still lines up so let's go ahead and put the screw on and there it is lined right up and then pretty much finally you want to put the plug back on <clears throat> exactly the way you found them right well, there it is all right so now let's go ahead and start her up and make sure it doesn't screech or anything okay All right, and there it is, y'all. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's running. And you can take it a step further, uh, which is what I typically recommend. And just get an amp, you know, get an amp draw and see if it, you know, is below your rated amp draw there. But that's pretty much it, y'all. Well, as always, thanks for watching like subscribe comment and we will see you on the next one peace